carpenter store. This chap who took him in is a, another Sito, he's supposed to be very distantly related. Uh -huh. He happened to be a martial art nuts, <laughs> the, the, the chap who, uh, who, who took him in. And one of the things he insisted on was all his apprentices who work in the shop must have a couple of hours every night practicing really? martial arts. Because I'm the only serious student because the others have home to go back to. Yeah. But I don't. I have yeah. to. I'm the only one left in the store at night to sleep in the store and everything, you know. <laughs> this is my favorite. My favorite bed is a coffin because they, this, the carpenter show also makes coffins. They say it's a, it's a nice house and it was cozy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he, he was, that, that is why he said I had, to, I had to be good. So he really trained himself, really paid attention and got to be very good in martial arts. Now, and who is this, your father? My father. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that she was asking. Yeah. That that is why, and that is why we, in turn, when we grow up, every night we he would train us for an hour. So I, I at least have a, quite a quite a basic grounding in martial arts. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. No, he's not. So he, he got to the point, and then he just, he, one day he took revenge on the. The, the couple of big fellows who used to uh, used to bully him, <laughs> he, he pounded them. <laughs> what happened to his parents? My grandfather have a rec was supposed to have emigrated somewhere in North America, but never returned. He perhaps didn't make his fortune. Actually, Clarence did a search and my father's grandfather's name, and they found uh, the, uh, Canadian, yeah, the Canadian Immigration Rec Office has a record of him landing in Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. But after Victoria, uh, he, uh, so when he didn't return, my grandmother, I don't know, one story is he was, he, she married, another story was, was she died young. We don't, we don't really know what happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how, when my grandfather left China to emigrate to North America, he was only three years old. But when my grandmother either left or died, she was only, he was only 11, 12 or 13. So he was left on his own, or practically on his own. And there was only the one child? Yeah. Because the father yeah. had left, yeah. I guess. No, I and think she had, he had a sister. He had a sister. But the sister got married and left for Hong Kong. Mm. And perhaps she didn't, certainly she, she didn't marry yet, rich either. Mm. So she didn't, I don't think she had the resources to look after him, mm. even if she wanted to. Mm. Mm. Well, <laughs> that's why I was good, because nobody else would, uh, well, would look after me. He's, he was short, and my dad was about five two. And uh, but when he was in Singapore, uh, when he was still in his bachelor days, he uh, visited the museum, Singapore Museum. You know, so he's still there in the museum with a very good friend of his, who became later on our neighbor. And he was looking around, enjoying the exhibit, and two big seat fellows. Indian Sikhs, over, both of them over, over six feet. They came and looked at these two two Chinese youngsters. They decided to try to bully them. Mm -hmm. But they were both happened to be very, very good masters of martial arts, not the average joker. And both of them got in, they got into a fight with these two Sikhs. And they, these two short <laughs> Chinese were, threw the seats out of the window <laughs> and landed on the ground outside. <laughs> and the police was called and they appeared before the judge either the next day or the, the judge looked at them. These two chaps are barely five two, five three, and these two six are about six four. <laughs> this is <a> case dismissed. <laughs> the judge dismissed it immediately. <laughs> 
against this man. <laughs> well, how could how could these two short <laughs> bully these two big <laughs> He was he was he was, he was quite amused by that. Same story as Linda's dad, Linda Whitehead's dad. Small guy. Linda, Linda Whitehead's dad. He was in his early seventies, and he was in a turning lane, and he didn't turn fast enough for the fellow that was behind in the him. car behind. So the fellow in the car behind, the young guy, great six less than half his age, and he's yelling at. Eric and waved at this one. And Eric's, and he said, no, no, you come out here, come out here. And so Eric says, no, you don't want me to come out. Come on, are you chicken, are you chicken? So Eric gets out and goes, ah. Knocks him out. Knocks him cold. And then he has to wait around for the police to come. And the police are all, well, what happened here? He well, he, he asked me for a fight, so... I knocked him out. He was a lightweight box champion. Yeah. And, uh, in his 20s. And so Eric got in trouble. He got charged with assault. He got charged with assault. He said, how can you charge me? He was, he was attacking me. I guess the guy must have taken a swing. But then, so how did Papa learn martial arts? I don't know. I, I, I even actually met his uh, Sifu. The Sifu was a very, very uh, handsome fellow. Yeah. But uh, he was uh, during the occupation. Somehow or other, he sort of uh, got too friendly with the Japanese uh, occupation forces. And after the war, the people gang up on him and they beat, beat him to death. Yeah. He, even even though he was a kung a kung fu sifu, but there were enough people <laughs> to to uh, corner him and 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 Well, he must have really killed. done something terrible. Yeah, yeah. To to <laughs> <laughs> he was quite quite a handsome fellow too, but they they uh, he, he was done to death by his uh, the people who hated him. They yeah. call him a, a collaborator. Yeah. <laughs> In 1976. Two NASA spacecraft named Viking 1 and 2 became the 